Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. No brakes. No brakes. No fear. No fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome along to the latest episode of British Speedway's official podcast, No Breaks, No Fear. And we look back on the big fixture on Monday at the National Speedway Stadium as the Bellevue Aces defeated the Ipswich Witches, Brady Kurtz having a big tussle with Emil Saifutinov. They're two of the best in the world by far and uh, it's never easy lining up with them two at the tapes and uh, yeah, to get a few wins over them and for, for the whole team to to push on with them too I think it's a it's a massive it's a massive boost for us the Sheffield Tigers had their biggest ever away win at premiership level last week over the Kingsland Stars Tobias Muzalak got a paid maximum and he credits some of his success to his trainers last time at Sheffield I uh, I took wrong shoes for the trip to England <laughs> so I brought back my Reeboks and it's yeah it worked And his teammate, Louis Kerr, is our main guest on the podcast this week, reflecting on a paid maximum for himself at his old stomping ground of the Adrian Flux Arena. Yeah, there's not not much better than going back to your old club and and doing good. I think it's my first ever away maximum. So I said to Steady after my last ride, I said, don't give me heat 15. I said, like, I've had my five rides, I'll end on an away match. So... Which is it's just such a great a great feel at Sheffield. Since I've moved there, you know, we're all having fun. Plus we've got a chat with Rory Schlein. Wolves are the next opponents for Sheffield on Thursday. And there's even reaction from the Cab Direct Championship and the National Development League as well. All on the way on No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Welcome along to this week's episode of the official podcast of British Speedway. No breaks, no fear. I'm Ian Brannan. Later on in this episode, our special chat will be with Louis Kerr of the uh, Sheffield Tigers and the Oxford Cheaters. He likes his big cats for his teams this season. Uh, So good chat with Louis coming up in just a bit. But first of all, we'll start at the National Speedway Stadium, where the Bellevue Aces swept to a 55-35 home win over Ipswich to move back to the top of the Sports Insure Premiership table. The Aces took match and aggregate points in an impressive display which saw them limit the Witches to just two race wins, both of them coming from Emil Saifutinov. Home skipper Brady Kurtz scored 13 plus one from five rides, dropping his only point when Saifutinov steamed through on the inside of the last lap in a thrilling Heat 4. Jamin Lidsey was also in the major points for the Aces as he won four races for a 12-point total. Dan Bewley added 10 from four rides in a powerful all-round display and we can hear from a few of those involved now as well including Richie Hawkins the Ipswich team manager he's coming up in just a mo first of all top scorer for the Aces then and involved in that thriller with Emil in heat for Brady Kurtz speaking with Lee Wild Brady Kurtz really strong performance on home track for the Aces you must be pleased with that as captain yeah for sure I think after last week was kind of a little bit disappointing in a way I know it was uh, probably a fantastic meeting for the fans and the super heat and everything but uh from a team perspective, I think it was we kind of let ourselves down and, uh, yeah, we needed to recover from that and put in a big performance today and I think everyone chipped in and, uh, yeah, we come back strong as a team and that's what we're going to need if we're going to go to the end. It was which brought two big names in, Doyle and Saifutinov. You seem to deal with them quite well, both you and the team. That must give you confidence, like you say, going towards the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. They're, you know, they're two of the best in the world by far and, uh it's never easy lining up with them two at the tapes and, uh, yeah, to get a few wins over them and for, for the whole team to, to push on with them too, I think it's a, it's a, massive, it's a massive boost for us and, uh, yeah, I think we just need to put this one behind us again and look for next week and uh, try and try and do a repeat and just keep improving throughout the year. On the other side of the pits, um, Lee Wild was chatting too with Keenan Rue of the Ipswich, which is five points for him on the night, but a tough night at the National Speedway Stadium. Yeah, uh, it's definitely a difficult night for all of us, I think. Uh, it's definitely a racing track. It's, it's, you get in front and next minute you're in fourth. So it's, uh, it's definitely hard to come to. It's not as easy as it looks. So uh, yeah, tough night for me and the team. Richie gave you the nod in Heat 15. That must be a nice vote of confidence from the manager. You can see your scores improving, getting better. Yeah, of course, it's not the scores I'd like, of course. I'm 
try my, my butt off to, to get better and score more points in England. But, uh, of course, I struggled again a little bit tonight with setup and track knowledge, to be honest. So uh, a tough night, but a lot of uh, information for next time I come here. Absolutely. Britain's a different game, isn't it? Just how difficult is it to transfer from the continent to different tracks like these? Yeah, of course. It's probably a bit more like a Polish track, to be honest, but there's just so many lines. It's hard to know where to race when you're in front or in last. So it's a big transition, but uh, I'm learning every week, so I'm taking as much as I can in. And just quickly, big couple of meetings coming up now for the Witches. Need to cement that spot in the playoffs. Yeah, we've got a, we've got a lot of important meetings coming up. So uh, I'm sure the boys will dig deep the ne- over the next few weeks and hopefully we can be where we have to be at the end of the season. Well, that defeat on Monday at the hands of Bellevue uh, follows on from a 39-51 loss at home to Wolverhampton. So the Witches' second reverse at Foxhall this season. And Ipswich boss Richie Hawkins knows his side have to find a regular winning formula as the race for the playoffs starts to gather pace. Richie, what are your thoughts? I mean, this is a track where sometimes you can not do an awful lot wrong and still lose by quite a few points. What did you make of your performance overall? Yeah, I didn't think we were as far off as the scoreline suggested. Um, got ourselves in good positions at times and just made mistakes and they're very very slight errors but the Bellevue boys yeah really took advantage and um, showed their home track knowledge but we've rode here enough times now we need to um, certainly when we come back not make their mistakes again because we're going to get punished and, and we did last season and we have done again tonight surprising to only get two heat winners with the the type of team you've got that's pretty unusual with any meeting and uh, I know Bellevue obviously are strong at the top themselves so, but they have the edge tonight yeah yeah we were I mean uh, Emil's done obviously got them two heat wins I think obviously Doyle's um, he looked a bit down on power he had an engine problem and I think he was blowing an engine in, in one so um, yeah he, he wasn't he wasn't, he wasn't as quick as normal tonight uh, but I'm sure you know that's something he'll very quickly rectify one rider whose score didn't reflect the effort he put in and you gave him heat 15 was Keenan Rue who was right on the pace all night and that must be really encouraging yeah Keenan's done well he's, he's done well all season I think yeah he's not far off scoring big points everywhere um, I think that he'll certainly won that his first meeting here I um, thought he did do well and um, yeah he'll definitely you know come back here again with a lot more knowledge and um, be confident because I think he should be confident himself he's, done, he's, he's not done a bad job tonight at all now you've consistently said this team will get better as the year goes on, but of course you've got to be there at the end of the season. You've lost a couple of home matches, so you've got to try and find some consistency fairly soon to make sure you don't find yourself in a, in a big scramble for top four. 100% at the moment. We're, we're the, there's, now looking at it at the moment, there's five teams that are going to fight for the playoffs and, and we're the fifth one at the moment. So um, that home defeat uh, on Thursdays you know, was a big blow to us, so we need to go makes Leicester on Thursday really important um, place obviously we know we can go well out we went well there earlier on in the year when we won in the cup so yeah one of the teams is definitely going to be fine with us um, yeah so it's, Thursday's a, a very important night for us yeah, do you see Leicester as absolute direct rivals I mean they've been to your place twice and run, run you close both times are they pretty much in, in the same fight albeit a team built in a very different way yeah 100% I think they, they are they're definitely going to fight for the playoffs and we're we're going to be there fighting with them. So Thursday and that track, obviously, we can go there with confidence. Um, so if we could get a win there, that obviously it's a little bit of a, what would you say? Six-pointer? Is it a six-pointer or a five or a four? Yeah, yeah, but you know, like that's obviously taking points off them as well if we could win there. So, um, yeah, it's vital. And then obviously the bonus point's very close as well. So we need to, we need to really perform on Thursday. It's a very, very important meeting at this stage of the season. Yeah, it's starting to get interesting, isn't it, in the Sports Insure Premiership? And you can see Ipswich in action against the Leicester Lions uh, on Thursday evening. If you can't see it in person, then you can watch it live on BSN this Thursday night. Sheffield ran riot at Kings Lynn with a huge 59 31 away win to move back into the top four of the Sports Insure Premiership table. The meeting marked the UK debut of new star signing Artem Laguta, but that was overshadowed by the Tigers, who extended their stunning record of success at the Adrian Flux Arena. Former Kingsland rider Louis Kerr and Polish ace Tobias Musilak both scored 13 plus 2 paid maximums. Jack Holder also unbeaten with 12 from 4 rides including the move of the night to pass Artem Laguta in heat number 6. Into the final lap here Artem Laguta holding the inside line. Yeah, Jack Holder around the outside. Jack Holder comes back on the inside of Laguta. What a 
running end to this heat here and it's going to be another win for the Sheffield Tigers Jack Holder claims it on the final bend for the Sheffield Tigers over Artem Laguta so a big night at the Adrian Flux Arena for the Sheffield Tigers their biggest ever away win at Premiership level and um, also since moving up to the top league of British Speedway uh, Sheffield have never been beaten by the uh, Kings Lynn Stars they drew once I think that was in a cup match but other than that uh, Sheffield have beaten Kings Lynn every single time since moving back up to the top tier let's hear from uh, one of the riders who got a paid maximum we'll hear from the other one in a bit Louis Kerr coming up long chat with him in part two but uh, the other success of the night was for Tobias Musilak who backed himself 13 plus two speaking to Lee Kilby on BSN yeah I, I really love uh, and enjoy uh, Kingsley in, uh, arena so um, that was really beautiful meeting for me I was actually full concentrating on the meeting um, I, I was laughing before the meeting but because last time at Sheffield I uh, I took wrong shoes for the trip to England, <laughs> so I brought back my Reebok, and it's it's worked. It's, yeah, it worked. It's so, worked. Uh, beautiful. So the whole team tonight, everyone was making great starts. Everyone was riding, looking for each other. When you're all riding like that, it just makes it easy, doesn't it? And enjoyable. Yeah, I really enjoy all the all the time Kingsley. So it's, it doesn't matter for me actually. Love the track. Um, so th- that's the thing. That's the point. But anyway. Maybe the maybe the score looks looks easy, but it's not it's not easy. No, it's still tough races on yeah, track. Isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. You have to be always concentrate, and uh, yeah, tonight we got a nice score, so uh, yeah, we're pretty happy and looking forward to the next one. And tonight, the first time this season that you've been wearing the number one number race jacket number. Yeah, for the first time this year. You're gonna hold on to it. Um, it's just yes, a number yes. for me, actually. So it's 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 no matter for me. Yeah, that's good. It's good team spirit. Toby, it's awesome to see you riding well, mate. Uh, glad I to see you again. Enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee. Always. We hug, we'll hug off screen. We'll hug off screen. Toby, thank you, mate. Enjoy the rest of the season and we'll, we'll catch up with you in a little while. Thank you very much. Legend. I feel like we've just attended the 2019 Swindon Robins title winning side reunion there. Uh, Tobias Musilak with Lee Kilby. Of course, um, Adam Ellis also riding for Sheffield, part of that squad as well. Simon Stead got Swindon links. There's, uh, there's a bit of Swindon about Sheffield, you have to say. Let's hear from the two team managers now, Simon Stead and Alex Brady. Contrasting emotions and lots of work to do for the Kingsland Stars, you fancy. Here are the two team managers uh, talking to Lee Kilby. Alex, we'll start with you. Tough one. Very very tough one tonight for you guys. Yeah, um, I think from the first four heats, it was uh, yeah, it was, it was a terrible start, and that's obviously what's cost us tonight. And we've been chasing the meeting where we've not had enough heat winners. I think uh, three all night and no real luck either. Obviously, we've we've was a breaking down in heat 14, but damage was done in heats one to four. And yeah, it was uh, it's been really really disappointing because it, it should have been this way, but we have to go again, pick ourselves up. A couple of, a couple of positive heats for you to take something from though. Surely, you know, you look at what you can take from the meeting. It was good to see our ten you know, get in the groove and get a bit quicker as the night went on? Yeah, Artem definitely comes in grips a bit more. The track's obviously the material's different to what he's used to, tyres different to what he's used to, so it's going to be a bit of a learning curve for him, but obviously he's shown his class in certain heats so far, um, but he's unfortunately not been backed up well enough by, by the rest of the boys. Kai's had a good debut as well with four from his three rides, but um, yeah, but overall we've, he's, we've not backed him up enough and uh, something we need to change. Simon, on the flip side, fantastic night. Everybody chipping in. Real good team effort. Yeah, uh, we needed that. We've We've had a, had a few fixtures away from home where we haven't performed as, uh, as we should have. Um, but tonight we were dominant, uh, back to something like uh, I, I know we're capable of. So a couple of really good results. But um, look, um, there's a lot of talk about Artem. It's great to see him in, uh, in British speed ray. Kingsley, uh, you know, pull one out of the bag there. So fair play. But uh, we needed to remove ourselves from that hype, um, come here and, and, and do the job. And we've done it. Well, things don't get any easier for Kings Lynn. They're back at the Adrian Flux Arena this Thursday, June 8th, and they're up against Bellevue. Uh, so the punches keep coming, but Artem Laguta will be back on track for the Kings Lynn Stars, and they'll be hoping for better this time around. For the Sheffield Tigers, it's Premiership Knockout Cup semi final action. It's the first leg of the tie between Sheffield and Wolverhampton, which has been slightly delayed because it took so long for Bellevue and Wolves to resolve their uh, original quarter final, which uh, led to this. Uh, and uh, this finally takes place on Thursday at Ollerton Stadium. So a much-needed home fixture 
coming up on the calendar at Ollerton and the visitors being the Wolverhampton Wolves who are on a good run of form they took four points in the league over Bellevue on Bank Holiday Monday winning away at Foxall against Ipswich last Thursday as well and uh, we can hear now from Rory Schlein I caught up with uh, Ruboy uh, who reflects on a busy week last week for the Wolves uh, yeah they were obviously three big means um, always always tough you know Bank Holiday Mondays against Bellevue and uh, to walk away, with, you know, with a draw that, uh, at their place, and then then obviously get the the bonus point and um, and the win at home was good. And then yeah, last night was fantastic. Um, they're, they're a good side at home. I just think we we caught them on a possibly an off night, but our lads were were dynamite. Um, Zach and Dougie and obviously Sam was leading from the front as well. So. Um, and Luke, you know, still not 100%, and Luke's still chipping in. So what I mean, it was a, it was an all-round good team performance, and um, and I think that was just too much for, for Ipswich. And a lot of us were, were gating a well, and, and we were very quick, you know, on a track that sometimes can be hard to get the setup right. Yeah, and Pete Adams uh, said that he felt, he, he, he didn't surprise him, he felt it was coming. And it seems that getting Luke back in the side is that final piece of the jigsaw. Yeah, well, we gelled well together. You know, like as much as we did with Scott, you know, Scott stepped in and, and did a did a job for us, and it was fantastic for us, especially at home. And um, but you, when you have a, a side and you build it, you want it together from from day one. So it was good to get Luke back. And um, but like I said, he, he's not even 100 percent fit yet. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just think it was a final jigsaw that we had to put in. And I would say. You know, we've always had good results at Ipswich, and I just, I don't know, with the lads were quite quiet, but we seem to just go about our business and get the job done. Pete Adams will always say nothing's won in May or, or June. Uh, that's always been his strategy, and I think it always usually takes Wolves uh, a few weeks to get going. I think that's not uh, a surprise. Uh, a lot of focus on Ipswich, though, with the, with the side that they've got, and especially how they've been going at home. Uh, were you surprised... Among among yourselves, that it was going the way that you know. I know Pete Adams wasn't surprised, but were you, were you uh, pleasantly surprised with how it's going? Well, you know, we were excited to, to obviously get the win, but we we all know we can ride the place well. So, Dougie probably, you know, we we joke that he he it's not his favourite kind of track, but last night proved you know he can get around there as quick as anyone. You know, to to obviously you know get one over Doyle and them on heat 15. So um, look, I think we just rose to the occasion and and rode to our ability and potential, and, and that's what. You know, Chris and Pete obviously expect, you know, when they built the team and uh, it showed last night. Let's talk about Zach Cook. Um, you had a 5-1 with him last night. He he also was involved in some other 5-1s as well. And his progression has been quite something over the last even few weeks, but also the, certainly the last year, um, which obviously this is new. He's a new rider to, to the to Wolves, new rider to the, to the Premiership, so some fans were unaware of him, but people have seen Poole, have seen his progression. You've been working with him quite a lot since his arrival uh, at Wolves, so just tell us about that work that you've been doing with him and, and his contributions in general too. Well, no, no Zach, from, from Paul actually, when he sort of started doing a, the last sort of bit of the season when we won the league down there a couple of years ago, so I know Zach from then, and we were going to race with each other at Somerset before it closed, so... Um, you know, I was a big, uh, big positive, you know, big plus, you know, to have him in the side. So when Chris says, you know, they were in talks, I said, no brainer. Uh, you know, his potential, he's young, you know, he's enthusiastic and, uh, he's showing just, I think not, um, not Bellevue meeting just gone. The Bellevue meeting before we had a really couple of good tussles with, like with Charles and, and, uh, showed his pace and, and his aggression. And I think he took a lot of confidence from that meeting, even though we got absolutely humped, he was probably one of the highlights and positives from that meeting. And he, and he's built off it. Um, getting better at Wolves every week as well. Wolves is, takes a while to get dialed in you know it's one of them tracks you got to get used to how to get around and he's uh, he's shown his potential for sure and I think I've seen you working with him I think it was after um, Sam Masters testimonial even straight away showing him how to get around Monmo because as you say it's it's not an easy place to to get to grips with no it's more lines it's mm. yeah you, you you can be within the ballpark we're set up around there but it's more lines than anything and and literally he's, he's just get, getting the use to the feel of getting into the corner and Get coming in backwards, you know, which you got to do at Wolves, and uh, making sure you don't miss that corridor. And um, I think last week, you know, the the race he had uh, with Paco and that, you know, showed that you know he, he knows a quick way around, and he knows how to ride it. So uh, he'll only get better at Wolves, but you know, you only have to look at last night and then Bellevue's performance away at Bellevue. Uh, he he will be one of our key riders for sure. And just a quick word about Berwick as well, because uh, of course uh, you're with them in the the Cab Direct Championship. Um, it, it, 
it's been a bit of a sticky start in places, but you've also shown some good form as well and, and beaten some some good teams early doors in the uh, in the championship there. So, um, what's the what's the outlook uh, at uh, at Shieldfield? Well, I think we've had a large break. I think, yeah, well, I think it's five, five and a half weeks since our last meeting. So, um, you know, I think the boys will be itching to get going. Uh, so we've got a lot of home meetings coming up, which is good for us. Um, and uh, hopefully we can start going on a bit of a roll. A uh, bit weird not to have a meeting for so long, but, you know, Berwick's one of them. Tra- I know we've, we've sort of been turned over a couple of times. I just think a few of the lads are still, like my, even myself, we're trying to find their feet. Uh, I'm st- I was still trying to get you know back up and running, you know, get back on the pace, and um, yeah, I-, I think we'll be. And I said it earlier as well. I think we could be a bit of a slow burner, so you know, just watch your space towards the end of the year. And and the, the tracks really, obviously, you couldn't get a more of a polar opposite to to Monmore than than Berwick, where it's full gas all the way. Yeah, I've, it's a, it's a track that I think if you ride every week, you make it your own. Um, you know, I've had very very good meetings there but I've also had some poor meetings there so but it is a track if you can get dialed in you're racing there each week so which will be good and I hope we've got loads of home mat- matches coming up in like June July August so um, yeah looking forward to it and yeah like, like I said it's been a long while since we've had a match and hopefully we can get get, get going so there's Rory Schlein and Wolverhampton Wolves head to Ollerton Stadium for the first leg of the Sports Insure Premiership Knockout Cup semi-final. It's Sheffield versus Wolves at 7.30. Plus there's action in the Sports Insure Premiership as well in the league. Kingsland versus Bellevue and Leicester versus Ipswich. Uh, both of those start at 7.30 and uh, Ipswich have a slight upper hand overall on the aggregate score in that tie but not much at all. It's 43 40 seven at halfway point with the um, uh, aggregate bonus point up for grabs in that one and then looking ahead to next Monday Sports Insure Premiership Bellevue versus Kings Lynn at 7.30 and then we have our first fixture in round two of the Sports Insure Premiership because the uh, teams face each other home and away twice and um, it'll be Ipswich versus Sheffield 7.30 this one live on Eurosport and Discovery Plus Ipswich versus Sheffield the first fixture in round two as is Wolves versus Peterborough at 7.30 as well. And then next Thursday, June 15th, uh, we're into round two action with Kings Lynn versus Wolverhampton and Leicester versus Bellevue. And then from round one of the Sports Insure Premiership, it's Sheffield versus Ipswich at 7.30. That one will be on BSN, by the way, uh, next Thursday. That rounds up the uh, Premiership picture for now. Uh, We'll move on to our main feature interview in the next part of this uh, podcast on No Breaks, No Fear this week, speaking to Louis Kerr, who, of course, will be lining up for the Sheffield Tigers and the Oxford Cheaters this week, his two teams in the two leagues of British Speedway. Having a chat with Louis, finding out what it was like heading out in heat number one at uh, Kings Lynn last week up against Artem Lagutri in one of the most anticipated races perhaps of the season it went better for Louis than it did Artem in the end we'll speak to Louis Kerr next on No Breaks No Fear What's the easiest choice you can make? Window instead of middle seat? Picking a vendor who sends a great gift basket? Outsourcing business tasks you hate? What about selling with Shopify? Whether you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real-life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell. Wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash try. Go to shopify.com slash try now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash try. No breaks, no fear. The official British Speedway podcast. The official podcast of British Speedway with a new episode every Wednesday. If you haven't liked or followed or subscribed or whatever it is on your app of choice, make sure you do that. It's totally free and just means you don't miss an episode as soon as a new one arrives. But it usually does arrive on a, on a Wednesday morning, early doors, to round up everything that's happened so far in that week and look ahead to what's coming up and some big guests as well. And our main guest this time is Louis Kerr of the Sheffield Tigers and the Oxford 
cheetahs in the cab direct championship and louis of course spent many years racing for the king's lynn stars so a uh, little bit weird this year to find himself racing for sheffield on his former home track of the adrian flux arena lining up against a former world champion in fact the world champion just in 2021 artem laguta louis was out in heat number one and it was all about silencing the crowd as far as Sheffield were concerned. And really, Louis, you did that fairly successfully. You beat Artem Laguta in heat number one, which must have been a, a nice little feather in the cap, uh, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, what a meeting to be involved in one of the more anticipated heats of Speedway, I fancy, in British Speedway this season. Yeah, I think like what you said, silence the hype. I think that was the main thing. You know, we, none of us really knew what he was going to do. You know, it's so different over here to, to Poland. But um, uh, I, I knew, you know, if I got out front, now I could do a good job. And um, yeah, it was a big week for me. It was it was good to be involved in that meeting with Artem. You know, I've never even been yeah. Artem, so it's cool to be around him and and uh, and you can get one over him too. And and yeah, you did that. And what a big night it was! Big night for Sheffield, biggest ever top flight away win for Sheffield since they moved up to the to the uh, Premiership and for you personally a paid maximum too so great result and maybe even sweeter that you got a paid max around your former home circuit of the Adrian Flux Arena you know you're, you're a Kings Lynn lad really and that's where you, you honed your craft in Speedway so to go back there and score big points must be pretty sweet yeah there's not there's not much better than going back to your old club and, and doing good it's um it's, I think it's my first ever away maximum. So I said to Steady after my last ride, I said, don't give me heat 15. I said, like, I've had my five rides. I'll end on an away max. So he was cool with that. And like I said, big win. You know, we all just, um, we're just it's just such a great, a great feel at Sheffield. Since I've moved there, you know, we're all having fun. We all have a laugh. And then you get Steady on. He's been there and done it. Um, absolutely fantastic team manager. Um, helps me no end. So, um yeah, it's just a pleasure to be around all those guys. That's exactly what Adam Roynan said to me. He said, um, we, we were saying that you'd had six rides, you, you could maybe be out in Heat 15, and Roynan says, no way, those bikes are going back in the van. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, 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 and the way I was riding, I think we had choice of gates in Heat 15, and the way I was trapping, you know, I'd, I'd like to think I'd have made it anyway, but... Um, I wanted to end on that 15. Yeah, and you were quick away from the start. In fact, Sheffield were, and I think it was pointed out by one or two people, the track maybe didn't lend itself to the best racing. I mean, it didn't stop Jack Holder uh, in that race, probably the race of the night, get up with him and uh, Artem Laguta um, going at it. But it, it really, the job was done for Sheffield out of the starts and, and really down the back straight on the first lap, the damage had been done. And that was very much the game plan for Sheffield, wasn't it, to make some electric starts yeah we'd like so we were all making good starts um the track itself probably it's the best odd road kings lane in a long long time you know normally it's um it's just over grippy and with the engines that we have now you know i'm not sure even the home riders like it when it's like that but you could actually get into the corner now and the, and the dirt gradually built up and um yeah it, it was a fantastic track the other night but um yeah just a great night for me and the team it was interesting, um, I was chatting to Rory Schlein on Friday night, and we've heard an interview I did with him, but we're also talking about Artem Laguta and what he needs to learn about British Speedway. And, and Rory was explaining that, say for Kings Lynn, whilst the track looks big and looks fast, it's not like a Polish track. You do have to turn the bike quite hard and he, he probably maybe got caught out by yeah. how hard you have to turn a bike and how hard the racing is at Kings Lynn and so it's not an easy track to just go out there and race on no not at all especially with you know with the grip Kings Lynn has, has as well and it is it does he's right it does ride tighter than um, than it looks especially I've watched it back on BSN and it is a lot tighter than you think to be honest but um, yeah we'll see see how he goes around places like Wolves and, and Leicester and <laughs> it might be a bit tough for him yeah, it's going to be a learning curve for him, but it's it's good to have another big name back in in British Speedway, and, and you're up against another one. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, next Monday, of course, you're on uh, Eurosport and Discovery Plus. It's the featured match on Monday night next week, which is Ipswich versus Sheffield, and uh, heading heading back to Foxall and 
and Emil, of course, you've you've had a bit of success down there with uh, you know Sheffield in at, at Foxhall in the past, so it's not a place you would fear going, really. I would think. No, I think we all enjoy going there. I know, I, know I do. Um, it'd be nice to go there off the back of them losing to Wolves as well. Um, we just carry on our form from Kings Lynn, really. Um, you know, even if we can, you know, in some respects, you have to let Doyley and Emil do what they want, and then and pack pack the minor places really, and um and win the other heats. Yeah, no last places as much as possible. Absolutely, yeah. You seem to be enjoying life um, at Sheffield um, since making the move there last year. Uh, obviously, you, you called time on your uh, career at Kings Lynn and then managed to find a, a new club in Sheffield, and that move seems to have worked out pretty well for you overall, would you say? I think it's um, I think it's a mix of everything, really. You know, I've done so long at Kings Lynn, it was... It's the best thing that ever happened to me, really. Um, in a sense, I wish I'd done it sooner. But um, now I don't know what it is. I'm just a lot happier now. Um, I I wouldn't say I actually enjoy riding Kings in that much. Um, I think the way the bikes are now with the grip, it's not the, the funnest place to ride. So I think that used to get in my head a little bit, especially as a home rider, week in, week out. So um you know, whereas I turn up to other tracks and I want to be there, I want to race and it's just enjoyable. So, so that helps. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a mix of everything. You know, I was there, like I said, so long, same people, same promotion, same track. It just gets a bit stale after a while. And, um, yeah. And then like I said, we, um, we sort of mutually parted ways to be honest. So it was, um, it was, it was quite nice really the way things stand out. Next up, it's Wolves at Ollerton for Sheffield this Thursday and it's a break from the league back to the Sports Insure Premiership Knockout Cup. It's the first leg of the semi-final and, um, well, you meet Wolves now. I mean, it was a bit of a delay getting to this point with taking so long for that uh, Wolves-Bellevue fixture in the previous round to get completed. But Wolves now probably slightly stronger than they were with Luke Becker back again and um, you've had some... Close run meetings in the past with Wolves, but the last meeting it was it was quite a big victory for Sheffield, hitting over sixty points past Wolves in the um, in the playoff semi final last year. Yeah, they're a, they're a strong team all the way through, um, and they'll be full of confidence coming off the you know the Ipswich away win they had. So um, it's going to be a tough meeting, but uh, you know we're all strong enough at Sheffield, um, so we'll um, hopefully hopefully we'll do the job. Pete is well experienced, so you know he'll know how to juggle things and play things right. But um, equally steady, he's very good. So um, yeah, like I said, I think you know we're we're full of confidence, especially at home. So you know we'll um, we'll hit him hard, hard early on, and then and then it's always tough to claw it back. And the club desperate for home meetings because obviously that's what makes the makes the. The cash tools ring uh, in, in many respects, and uh, the club are desperate for it. The fans are desperate for, for home meetings as well at Ollerton, and one thing or another, there's not been too many of them. But uh, great to get Wolves finally to Ollerton for the first time this season. Yeah, that's that's the problem. You know, home fans are, they they want to see their team week in week out. You know, so so it's been it's been really tough. Um, so yeah, it'll be good for the fans to watch us on their you know their home their home club, and it'll be good for us riders. You know. Um, you know, it's where you get your confidence, isn't it? Your home meeting. So, um, yeah, looking forward to getting back there. Obviously, Sheffield's passage through to the final is far from sure yet. There's a long way to go. Ipswich, though, heavy, heavy favourites to be going through to the final. They're 24 points up over Peterborough at the halfway stage, and you'd be a brave person to bet against Ipswich at, at this stage always possible I guess but whoever makes it through to the knockout cup final it's looking like they'll be up against Ipswich yeah it'd be tasty that so um, like you said I think yeah Ipswich are looking like they'll they'll be in the final so um, yeah I want I want to win that that again this year so um, hopefully we can do the job it's going to be tough you know like I said Wolves are a strong team especially at home so yeah we'll um, fingers crossed we can, we can get the job done until last year, you'd never really won any major silverware in Speedway. 
I think I'm right in saying, uh, certainly y- your first major title with uh, Red Car winning the championship pairs the night before Cardiff and then winning the Premiership League Cup with Sheffield, of course, beating Kings Lynn as well in that. Um, your first major uh, ma- major trophies for the cabinet. So looking to add to those, I imagine. Yeah, it's been, it's been good. It's, it's always it's tough, isn't it, when you feel like you've had a good season, but you've, you know, you've got nothing to show for it at the end of it. So, um, no, it's been a good, good run and, and then obviously the, the the two silver helmets with that as well, which is pretty cool. So hopefully um, I get asked to do a third and be nice to, to win three on the bounce. It's a good event, the Teesside Silver Helmet. Definitely one for the calendar if, you, uh, if you're if you looking to to try, try out something different. And you also took the uh, the other prize of <laughs> the um, yeah. best celebration of the night as well for the worm. Attempt, the attempted worm. Attempted worm <laughs> over the finish line. It was... Uh, it, it was excellent. Excellent way to finish. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely a good event at the end of the season. It is. I love the silver helmet. It's always a, a tough meeting. and um, But, yeah, like I said, it's, it's a great track. And, um, like I said, it's a good way to, to finish the season off. And had luckily had, you know, two two good meetings and gone back to back. But, um, uh, yeah, I don't think it's ever been done three on the bounce. So that's definitely an aim of mine. Well, yeah, why not? Why not? And, and just to round up on the Sheffield situation before we, we talk about Oxford, you've got Ipswich away at Foxhall on Monday, back at Ollerton on Thursday. Um, any fixture that has Emil Saifutinov riding it at the minute obviously seems to attract even more attention. But for Sheffield, we, we saw how you handled the Artem situation and you know getting the job done. And you must see that there is an opportunity against Ipswich that whilst, yes, they've got Jason Doyle and Emil Saifutinov, the rest of the side not really contributing as strongly with the points and maybe that's an opportunity for Sheffield. Yeah, I, th- I think so. I think, like you said, you know, they've got two of the strongest in the league. Um, but you need you need your backup. So if, if, if the other lot, you know, have an off night, which happens, yeah. It's going to be tough for them, but um, hopefully we can capitalise on them losing, you know, at home as well as Bellevue last night. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that. On to the Cab Direct Championship, and you're part of the Oxford Cheaters, which is um, obviously, you know, a, a side that we were so pleased to have back in British Speedway and was hugely successful last year and continues to be so this year. Um, a lot was made of the the way the team's built. It's it's a very solid lineup with um, some big hitters at the top end, and a lot of people saying you're a top heavy team. But there's yourself, there's Scott Nichols, Sam Masters, um, and then you've got riders like Jordan Jenkins in there, who's certainly no slouch around Oxford. So you know it's a strong old lineup with maybe some lesser experienced reserves, Luke Colleen and, and Henry Atkins in the side. But I think you're proving that. The formula so far generally working. It didn't worry me at the start of the year, but um, obviously I'd never even heard of Luke, and uh, and everyone was saying you know, how top heavy we are. But since the you know the start of the season, they've all been doing more than their jobs. And um, I think we've you know we've surprised a lot of people. Um, I think you know they struggled at pool, but then you know most clubs do struggle at pool to be honest. So um, no, they've been doing really good, and Ryan coming in. The Luke's done a good job, so um, no, I think we're all there's a good there's a great feeling down at Oxford as well, and we definitely want to want to win something this year. And what's the main aim to that then? Is that to get into the playoffs first and foremost? Of course, it's a top six that go through to the playoffs this year in the Cab Direct Championship, so gives um, a few more opportunities perhaps, but um, a good chance that that Oxford could achieve that, and then from there on, it's uh, it's all on the day, isn't it? Really? Yeah, I think so. Anything can happen, then can't it? But um, uh, there's no reason why we can't. You know, with, with the team we've got and the experience, you know, having Sam and Scotty in the team. Even for me, like looking looking at them, and it's great for me. Um, so yeah, there's no reason why not. Say so top six is, is doable. So um, that's yeah, definitely first first plan. Scott had a massive tumble at pool, didn't he, last week? And um, and he was he was on Eurosport talking to people about the you know how the grip uh, is very valuable on the inside later in the meeting, and then there he was going for it himself on the Wednesday and flying in the air. It was a spectacular. And one was it? Yeah. Well, was he all right? Do we know? Yeah, I think he's all right. I think he's just. Uh, I think what did he do? I think he, I think he banged his, his 
back or something like that. I'm not really 100% sure, but I think it was so slick at pull. Most people sort of um, playing with the throttle a little bit to find that grip and his throttle stuck. And um, yeah, I think he hit a little hole or something and it just just reared up on him. But uh, yeah, luckily no one else was involved because I think Richard Lawson was behind him, was pretty close to hitting him. But uh, yeah, yeah, he's all right. Good. I think he said he put on Instagram that maybe one of his fillings fell out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, um, and, and you yourself have been involved in one of the most spectacular incidents, I think. And, and I know you were you were sort of battered and bruised, I'm sure. But um, great to see you walk away from that in the end. The the one against Edinburgh at at, uh, at Oxford, where we were doing that for BSN, and yeah, again your bike took off, didn't it? Went into the fence, and you bounced off the air fence, and probably went what twenty feet in the air, yeah. <laughs> something like that. It was, it was quite high. I was lucky. Yeah, it was. Um, well, it was a pretty scary crash to be honest. I just I just came in on the dirt line, and I couldn't turn and clip Cookie's back wheel, and then I was a passenger from then. But I was okay. I think they they signed me off on uh, suspected concussion, which. I was a bit, you know, a bit annoyed about, but um, yeah, we got through that. But yeah, that was a pretty scary one. We got very lucky. Yeah, very lucky and glad you're fine. But do you have that split second moment of dread? You know, that oh moment of you can tell that things are out of control or something's gone wrong or your bike's taking off and you can see the the fence or the air fence coming at you or, or whatever it is and bracing for it what goes through your mind when when things start to go yeah. wrong yeah I, I do remember that split second of sort of dread i remember thinking to myself you know it, it'll be okay just ride this out and you'll, you'll be okay and luckily like i said i landed but one of my feet down the side of the fence um but i think the way i've gone in i've just hit at the right angle and hit the bike and it's just sent me up vertical but um yeah, pretty lucky. And the bike wasn't too bad either, to be honest. Well, that's good because um, that can get expensive pretty quickly, can't it? Um, you're in your workshop now. Um, people obviously won't be able to see this, but if you can imagine, we're in Louis's workshop. His bikes are just behind him and he's he's holding a chain in his hand, <laughs> polishing it up. Um, what work is ahead of you now in the in the days running up to your next meeting? How how does it go for a Speedway rider between meetings? They're all they're all washed from Kings Lynn and all built up. I've just got a few little... Um, things to sort out um new, new primary chain new primary guard um yeah just well there's a lot of work goes into it for me to to wash a bike probably around six hours for me so um yeah it's not just turning up and racing it's the the washing the bike the traveling and then the easy bit is riding really the four or five minutes you're doing but a lot, there's a lot of work, a lot, an awful lot of work goes into it. And, and so, really, would you say that the busiest days are the ones following a meeting? You, you've done your five minutes work, uh, and then you've got that six hours or more to, to sort a bike out. Is that where the real work begins, and it's a bit more fraught then, a bit lot, lot more to do? Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit tedious because it's so repetitive. But you know, it's the way it is, isn't it? So, um, and I guess if you ride two bikes, it's double the work. Yeah, exactly. Two bikes, you know. It's, the nightmare but i sometimes get a lot of it done you know if i'm not too far away um i'll get a lot of it a lot of it done after the meeting just to make things easier the next day and then and then away we go yeah and on your bikes people can't miss the the name of your main sponsor ajn steel stock which is on your bikes it's on your kevlars it's on your van it's everywhere it's a real bold um sponsored partnership that you've got there and i know that it's you know, it is a big deal for you. Um, but it, it, having one big sponsor, um, that surely makes things a lot easier for you from a business point of view. But also it means that that sponsor gets to dominate all the different things that you and, that you do and, and the areas of your bike and, and their message gets through better as well. So keeps things simple for everybody. That was the plan, you know, keep things simple, bold. Um, and I want to keep them happy, you know, um, which they're extremely happy and um you know without sponsors i wouldn't be able to do this and you know fortunate enough to have you know a big one in ajn um so anything i can do you know to keep them happy and um yeah it's fantastic best thing that's happened to me in a long time and it was in a pub so 
<laughs> oh, happy days. <laughs> the the be- best point you've ever bought then. Yeah, absolutely. And the other distinctive thing about you is your tattoo game, which is uh, heading upwards, uh, up your neck and now onto your head. It's a, a strong tattoo game. Yeah, I've, uh, it's getting there slowly. It's just time, money, you know, but uh, I've, I've got a little bit more on my head I'm having done next week just to finish that off. Um, yeah, and then just carry on wherever after that. And what is what is the what is the ultimate end game on the with the head? Uh, well, I, 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 it's based basically there. I've just got to get my front the front sorted out, and then um, yeah, pretty crazy. But I've always wanted a head tattoo, and then when I finally completely lost my hair, that was it. I was having it done. <laughs> All right, okay. <laughs> well, it's so yeah, yeah. You're you're certainly owning it. It's good. I think it's a quite a brave thing to do. But you're a speedway rider, so that's yeah. not, not in short supply. No, that's it, mate. I, I love them. You know, I know they're not everyone's taste, especially on <laughs> a full head tattoo. But um, I'd like to be different. I don't so. think uh, I don't think I could pull it off, but I think you can. <laughs> <laughs> You've got decent head of hair. <laughs> well, lo- hopefully, long, long, long may it last. But if if I find myself losing it, then I'm going to have to give it some consideration, aren't I? Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Something makes me think that it's never going to come to that. But uh, my thanks to Louis Kerr for joining us on this episode of No Breaks, No Fear. You can see Louis in action at Perry Bar on Wednesday night for the Oxford Cheaters against the Birmingham Brummies. And uh, then on Thursday, uh, riding for Sheffield against Wolverhampton. And you'll see him on the TV because on Eurosport Monday night, it's the Sports Insure Premiership clash between the Ipswich Witches and the Sheffield Tigers. And Louis, of course, will be racing for Sheffield in that. Uh, in the next part of No Breaks, No Fear, we'll just have a look at what's been happening across the Championship and also the National Development League as well well and bring you up to date and uh, we've also got some uh, audio from uh, the Mildenhall match which uh, took place uh, against the Bellevue Colts last week as well so uh, that to come in the final part of No Breaks No Fear next No Breaks No Fear the official British Speedway podcast well, we'll have a rundown of what's been happening around the rest of British Speedway in this final part, and starting in the Cab Direct Championship, where the Scunthorpe Scorpions had three maximum scorers in an impressive 55-35 Cab Direct Championship win over Redcar at the Eddie Wright Raceway. Ryan Douglas on 14 plus one, Michael Palm Toft with 13 plus two were both unbeaten from five rides, whilst skipper Simon Lambert added 10 plus two from four rides, combining for three five ones with. Ryan Douglas on each occasion they rode together. Uh, the win moves Scunthorpe to the top of a very early league table, whilst top performer for the Bears, Connor Bailey, joined in with an excellent 10 plus 1 score as he earned a nomination for Heat 15. Well, we can get a quick word now with uh, Dave Pete, the manager of the Scunthorpe Scorpions, and also Gavin Parr from the Red Car Bears. Yeah, we, we did need this result, um, especially after last time. Um, all the boys showed up tonight, so it made a big difference. You win away at Glasgow one way, but it brings it down to earth, doesn't it? But uh, I kind of fault them for their effort. Every one of them's give 100%, just basically not our night tonight. No, indeed. I mean, you were just a little bit late into the booth because you were actually conferring with the referee about whether Conor Bailey would be eligible for heat number 15. He's had a fantastic night, hasn't he? He has. He, he, to be fair, the last three weeks, he's all of, all of a sudden it's just clicked. And I think we all know he started riding in the conference or the development league. He's starting to get in his races at working and then all of a sudden, yeah, winning races breeds confidence. And yeah, he's, he's been fantastic tonight, to be fair. As Gavin Parr speaking to Hayley Bromley from BS after that a big win for the Scunthorpe Scorpions. Meanwhile, the Glasgow Tigers demolished Birmingham 64-26 to open their Cab Direct Championship campaign with the most emphatic of wins. Number one, Chris Harris scored 13 plus two, a paid maximum, with big points also coming from Captain Tom Brennan, who got 13, Klaus Vissing with 10 plus one, and Benjamin Basso, nine plus two bonus points in a one-sided encounter at Ashfield. Brummies skipper Justin Sedgman scored 10 and 
notched the visitors only race win whilst James Wright was withdrawn as he continues to suffer shoulder trouble and I think the latest word is that not only is he suffering from shoulder trouble but also uh, potentially a broken wrist as well so he is going to be out of the Brummies uh, fixture this Wednesday um, against the Oxford Cheaters couple of team changes with the latest averages now coming into play in the Cab Direct Championship. And uh, one of those big changes is at the Edinburgh Monarchs, where Danish youngster Bastian Bork makes his Edinburgh debut in Friday's big derby against the Glasgow Tigers. Dale Wood also gets promoted into the senior Monarchs side from the academy side. The duo have replaced Jacob Hook and Kyle Bickley in a move which also sees Lasse Fredriksen now drop to reserve. Red car promoter Jamie Swales thinks his side could benefit in the long term from a change in the averages, which now sees Danny King take over at number one in the Bears' side. Eric Riss remains still sidelined. And Ben Morley hopes more regular racing will see his season gather pace, having agreed to rejoin Plymouth at the expense of Paul Stark. Looking ahead to what's coming up this week then in the world of the Cab Direct Championship. Well, uh, Plymouth and Poole clash twice in 24 hours, Tuesday and Wednesday. Birmingham bid for a first home win of the season as they take on Oxford at Perry Bar. And there's that big Scottish derby clash between the Edinburgh Monarchs and the Glasgow Tigers at Armadale on Friday, the same evening that sees Redcar host Berwick. Scunthorpe take a two-point lead into the second leg of their knockout cup tie with the Birmingham Brummies. So that's the way things look in the Cab Direct Championship. National Development League, and well, let's start with Mildenhall, who enjoyed an excellent weekend with success on the road at Workington, followed by a hard-fought home win over the Bellevue Colts. We can hear from team manager of the Mildenhall Fen Tigers now, Jason Gardner. And team manager Jason Gardner for the Fen Tigers joining me now. And uh, Jason, a match of two halves uh, there uh, what was it like from the inside there? It looked as though the Colts were going to pull something back out of that one, but then the Fen Tigers dug deep once again. Yeah, um, what was it, five heats gone, we were ten points up on the day and we thought we were sort of cruising. We always knew Bellevue would be strong um, and they came back at us strong in the second half of the meeting. A lot of our boys had machine issues today, um, so we were sort of chasing setups and bits and pieces. And hot sunny day, I think the track caught a few people out, but we got there and we got the win on the day in the end. That final race, uh, Alfie Bow and Lee Complin, maybe not the 5-1 from them we normally uh, get, but they did the business, they did what was required. Yeah, we knew it, so they'd bring it home. Very close race there, and Heat 13 was a lip and tuck one as well. But there was some great racing all round today, so hopefully the crowd have gone home ha- um, happy and seen some good, a good meeting. And if we have to name a man of the match, I guess it might go to uh, to Josh Warren. He really is bouncing back in form now he's down at reserve. Yeah, definitely. He's now had two good meetings where we knew he'd gain his confidence being at reserve and he can now push on from that. But credit to Ben Trigger as well. He's just had two really good meetings and another meeting he would have sort of probably deserved to heat 15 today as well in terms of he's done more than enough. And in both meetings, I think he scored pay 10 um, yesterday and today as well. So it's a whole, whole team effort couple of meetings uh, coming up on the road. First stop is going to be uh, Cowley, Oxford on Tuesday night uh, there. A real cruncher against Oxford. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's now first against second. Um, we knew Oxford are going to be a strong team this year with their riders who double up in the championship. Um, we've got a two-point lead for the bonus point to take their place, so we really need to go there and aim to get the win on the day to make to all three points. So certainly we're going to be a t- tough meeting, but hopefully our boys can carry the form on for these t- last few days. And we're missing Ben Trigger because he's doubling up. He's at Plymouth, so we've got a guest to sort out tonight to take his place, and hopefully a guest can come in and do a good job for us as well. And then Berwick on Saturday, you've run the uh, bullets close the last couple of times you've uh, been there. They're certainly vulnerable at home. What are your thoughts on going to the borders and taking something bigger away? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Berwick's another track where, like you said, the last few years we're putting good scores there. Lee Compton absolutely loves the place around there, so he'll be passing plenty of tips. But because of Berwick's record this year, again, we need to be going there, targeting an away win to make the difference in the league table as well. And of course, a fortnight till we're back here at Workington, the opposition. You've won big in Cumbria, but taking nothing for granted when the Comets come down. No, nothing for granted. Again, Workington will come back here probably stronger than what they were yesterday. We're a point to prove. Um, so every meeting we've got to be on the guard, but we need to make sure we keep this unbeaten home record gone because that's going to be vital at the end of the day. 
Jason Gardner, the team manager of the Mildenhall Fen Tigers, talking to Craig Saul there. Well, Craig also spoke to a couple of the riders as well. In a moment, we'll hear from Jack Smith, captain of the Bellevue Colts. But first, let's hear from Josh Warren from the Mildenhall camp, who reflects on another hard-fought and close victory. Yeah, the fans must like the close meetings, but I'm sure Jason don't really enjoy them. But no, nah, it's nice to get a bit of form back for myself personally, but hopefully... We can keep winning, but by bigger margins next time. I could say a great weekend for yourself. So close to double figures uh, yesterday and a couple of wins in the uh, in the basket uh, today as well. You're moving back in the right direction again. 100%, yeah. It's, you can't beat that winning feeling. You know, that's what we all, all want. But, you know, you can sit here and overthink it when things aren't going right, but we just kept focused and results are showing now, so it's good. I know the uh, difference between success and failure is such a fine margin there. All it takes is just that little tweak, that little bit of confidence, that little bit on the bike, and it's proven that today. 100%, yeah, it's all confidence, really. Um, Track was real nice at the start of the meeting, and then it slickened right off, which caught us out of it. A few of the lads had bike problems, but at the end, we're a good good team, 1-7, so hopefully we can keep winning, and uh, yeah. Shamu's boss. Well, Jack Smith uh, joins me now for the visiting uh, Colts and uh, Jack, I guess, ultimately disappointed not to take home the victory there, but a match of two halves and uh, what a fight back. Yeah, definitely, you know, um, proud of the boys for putting in a good shift. You know, this place isn't the easiest to come. Um, you know, a lot of away riders that come here and you do track walk, it, it is a bit intimidating to begin with just because the amount of grip and how patchy it is, it, it does, you know, get negative thoughts in the boys' minds, but we all sort of, you know, come back, got changed, stuck stuck into it, and, and once, you know, the four, first four races got out of the way, the track came in, it was good racing, nice dirt line on the outside, and yeah, unfortunate that we didn't win, you know, that's what we came to do, and we need to start winning away meetings, but to get that aggregate point, and we've done that twice now, you know, that's the most important thing, I suppose. And a great afternoon for yourself after the first race, Ducky, really settled in. Yeah, I felt a bit like I felt like I was throwing it back to 2016 in my first race. Bit felt like a bit of a wobbler on the bike, but um, I, I just think I struggled with setup and track conditions. Come in, I changed five things in, at once, uh, and then after that, I didn't change one thing, and I went and got four straight wins. But it's just a bit frustrating, really, because two meetings in two days, and I'm starting to feel the rhythm, enjoying myself, and then I've not got anything for three weeks now. But I've shown today that I can beat, you know, championship riders because they've got two in their team and I've beat them uh, twice each today. So, yeah, just a shame, really. I wish I was on the bike more. I wish I was in the championship and I feel like I could push my career a bit further. Good stuff. Thanks very much, Jack. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, Jack Smith, the captain of the Bellevue Colts. It was a good effort from Bellevue because they were 12 points down earlier in the meeting, got it back to a last heat decider. And whilst they may not have won the day, they won the aggregate bonus point from their trip to Milden Hall. Um, busy time for both of those sides because uh, Bellevue were the uh, day before at Leicester and um, they uh, had a bit of a tricky time uh, against Leicester. Um, Bellevue beaten 51-39. Leicester fighting back from six points down in that meeting as well. And Workington suffered their first defeat of the new era when they lost out at home to Milden Hall last Saturday. Elliot Kelly suffered concussion and that rules him out for uh, 12 days from the time of the accident as well. So get well soon to Elliot. Um, 57-32 defeat at the hands of Oxford was far from the only piece of bad news from the Edinburgh Monarchs Academy last Friday. Kyle Bickley, who recently lost his place in the club's senior side, announced his retirement shortly after the meeting. Uh, Alex Spooner also suffered a broken collarbone in an awkward ca- crash in that meeting as well. And the Berwick Bullets came agonisingly close to a home win over Oxford on Saturday, only to suffer the frustration of conceding a 5-1 in Heat 15 for a 44-46 defeat. Speedway can be a cruel mistress sometimes. Looking at the week ahead, well, leaders Milden Hall visit third place Oxford on Tuesday, uh, then make the trip to Berwick on Saturday, champions Leicester racing at Workington on Saturday afternoon. Uh, also, the latest round of the British Youth Series at 250cc and 125cc levels takes place at Scunthorpe following the Scorpions' knockout cup clash with Burnham.
Birmingham on Friday. So look out for that if you're heading to that one. Well, we'll round off by looking at the fixtures for the week ahead. There's plenty of speedway to go at. Wednesday, Cab Direct Championship, Birmingham versus Oxford, 7.30. Pool Pirates versus the Plymouth Gladiators at 7.30 as well. Uh, on Thursday, it's back to Premiership action. Sports Insure Premiership, uh, Kings Lynn versus Bellevue at the Adrian Flux Arena and Leicester versus Ipswich at the Pidcock Motorcycles Arena, both getting underway at 7.30 in the Sports Insure Premiership. Then the Sports Insure Premiership Knockout Cup semi-final that we talked about earlier. It's the first leg, Sheffield Tigers versus the Wolverhampton Wolves against 7.30 at Ollerton Stadium. Friday, back to Cab Direct championship action Edinburgh Monarchs versus the Glasgow Tigers I don't need to uh, really set that one up anymore for you 7.30 the start time there at Armadale and the Red Car Bears take on the Berwick Bandits so a couple of local derbies in the league and in the Knockout Cup quarter final it's uh, Scunthorpe versus Birmingham Scunthorpe already have a uh, a two point lead going into that on aggregate, uh, and then after that meeting, of course, there will be that British Youth Championship fixture, the 250cc and 125cc. Stick around after the meeting and watch some uh, undoubted stars of the future that'll be involved in that one. Saturday, June 10th, National Development League. It's the Berwick Bullets versus Milden Hall at 7pm at Shieldfield, and then over at Workington. Workington taking on the reigning champions, Leicester, at 3 o'clock. And then on Monday, back to Speedway on your TV. Eurosport Discovery Plus and uh, it is the Sheffield Tigers away at the Ipswich Witches on Monday evening. It's a crammed uh, programme on Monday of Sports Insure Premiership action with Bellevue taking on Kings Lynn and Wolverhampton taking on Peterborough as well at the same time. And then Wednesday, looking ahead even further because there is a very significant meeting taking place at Pool Stadium. It's Steve Worrell's testimonial which uh, is uh, on for its second run having first of all been um, called off because of a bad weather forecast but uh, best things come to those who wait. You say it's a uh, pool party Pirates versus the Bellevue Aces, and uh, not your regular lineups, you'd uh, you'd say, but um, certainly fairly balanced lineups with some big hitters on both sides. Uh, for the Pool Pirates, they are led at number one by Artem Laguta. What a signing that is for Steve Worrell uh, on uh, that particular testimonial day. There also uh, riding will be Kyle Howarth, Steve Worrell himself, of course, Danny King, Richard Lawson, Ben Cook, and Zach Cook. So the majority of the team that uh, made up that title-winning side last year for the Pool Pirates in the Cab Direct Championship, along with former Pirate Kyle Howarth, Artem Laguta, and for Bellevue, uh, they're led by Mate Zagar and supported by uh, other aces past and present, Tom Brennan, Rory Schlein, Charles Wright, Chris Harris... Kyle Newman and Norick Bladorn. So those are your lineups uh, for the Steve Worrell testimonial, which takes place next Wednesday, the 14th of June. And that's it for us for this week. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back with you next week. Keep up to date with everything happening across British Speedway on the various places online, including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram on the official British Speedway accounts. Uh, and, uh, of course, on the main website as well, britishspeedway.co.uk. Have a great week, wherever you're going to uh, take in your speedway. And we'll see you next time on No Breaks, No Fear. No Breaks, No Fear. The official British Speedway podcast. Sports Social Podcast Network.